Hi everyone, welcome to episode two of what to do with three barrels and some poles. <laughs> so jumping ideas if you don't have a lot of jumping equipment um, and if you want some new inspiring ideas. So here I've got the three 40 gallon drums and yesterday we did um, apexes. So today I'm going to set up how to teach your horse to jump skinnies. Being an eventer, this is obviously one of the most important things that you need to do. Um, and it's actually a really straightforward exercise to school. The nice thing about having 40 gallon drums is that they're portable. So, you know, I always start on the arena because it's nice and secure. So you can still, in a sense, be schooling cross country, even if you can't actually get to a cross country course, you can do it in the arena. The next thing I will do with them is take them somewhere else. So um, take them on a slope, take them um, um, and put them on, on, on a hill or on a mound or, you know, use them before or after or on the edge of a water jump. So basically you can in integrate them with any type of jump um, that you need to in order to replicate cross country. Huey's spotted the barrels already. Said they were not on the arena last time I saw it. This is amazing how like a three-star eventer, he's such a spooky little horse, can be so brave. God, even when we put these pop plants in, they absolutely shat their pants. Oh, here we go. Game on. They absolutely shat their pants at these big pop plants. Especially, I think, the day I rode down the arena when we knew it was really windy and they were blowing in the wind like flags. All right, this could be interesting. It could end up on the floor. Oh, oh my God. Oh, we're slowing down. Oh my God. Oh God, I forgot about this. Oh, and we're turning. Oh, shit. Sorry, Chris, you're in the garden. Oh, hang on. Huey, ferret. Okay. okay, this is actually like lots of concern. When Huey first came from Ireland, he wasn't a fan of the rake marks on the ground in the outdoor arena. It was okay if they all went the right way, but if they changed direction, that was not okay. Apparently that was very much not okay. <laughs> this is kind of like a challenge. Who can ride with one hand and not fall off? Whoa. And then he'll just literally go off and eat them. Whoa. You're a dag. So this is my starting setup and here I have two 40 gallon drums on their sides and they're pushed together. And just to secure them, I've put a pole both on the takeoff and on the landing side here so that if the horse knocks them, which is highly likely at some point that they don't go rolling away because everybody knows that rolling barrels are actually terrifying monsters. I've then put long poles out the side and these are to act as wings to deter the horses from running out to the edge and kind of filter them into the middle. So I'm going to use this as my warm-up fence for Huey and this could be quite funny because he's really spooky so um, stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> nice lateral work, lovely. <laughs> you fool. Wake up the small child. Oh, really? Really? Oh dear. Yeah. yeah. Because Huey's really spooky, I'm going to trot into this first. So with anything that I think they're, they're going to have a good look at, I try to come in way slower so their brain's got longer to process it. He's done a lot of this, but his nature is that he's really, really spooky. So um, rather than canter in and have to deal with all the hoo-ha, I'll trot in slower and deal with the hoo-ha. And we'll trot um, over it until he is um, more at home with it and quite happy about it. Shouldn't take too long, but he just likes to have fun because he is a toddler.
Next step is to take away one of the barrels and set up exactly the same jump with the long poles going from the edge of the barrel out to filter the horse in and to use the poles on the ground as a stabiliser for the barrel. You can use shorter poles too if you have them. So um, usually all of the broken poles that you collect over time, they work really well for this kind of thing. And what I'm going to do too is I'm going to jump it going towards the poles on the takeoff side. And then once the horse is confident with that, I'm then going to jump it from the other side. So you can see where you still have the wings there, but you have a narrower face. And you can make the poles come out wider if you want to, but um, after I've jumped it with the poles on the takeoff side, I'm then going to approach it coming from this way. And basically there's no right or wrong amount of times to do it. Now we've taken the poles away and we're just going to use the one barrel, which is also a mounting block, for short people. And having the poles there either side means it doesn't roll away. It's a little bit more challenging when you don't have the poles there, but I think that's also a good um, personal training exercise. <laughs> So for our next trick, our next progression, I'm going to stick with the same height but I'm going to add another barrel to the back of it. So the width is double, um, as in when you're jumping it from front to back, it's still as narrow and it's the same height. So this idea um, is so I can jump it from all different directions. So basically I can jump it on an angle, I can jump it uh, you know, left to right front to back, whatever, and then um, after that I am to take one barrel away and be able to jump the length of a lying down barrel as well. So it's really just teaching the horses to um, kind of get missile lock and just whatever you point them at, they just stay straight, no matter whether it's one barrel, two barrels, a blue barrel, you know, a red bucket, whatever it may be, they just stay on the line that you point them at. So anyway, we'll have a go. Yeah. When we want to start moving to upright barrels, there is quite a big height difference here. So I strongly suggest that you're really capable of jumping at least the height of the barrel as a standard jump, um, because funnily enough, this just seems way bigger and way harder um, than the same type of normal 10 to 12 foot wide normal show jump or cross country fence. So I'm starting here with two barrels and you can see I've got the white side guide rails. I've also got a ground rail here, which you can pull further out. I've got a top rail to um, give good visibility to the top of the fence. And I've also got a rail on the other side because I'm also gonna jump it from this side as well. So we're gonna start with two barrels. And once we're confident with that in both directions, we'll then progress on to making it one barrel and keep the wings on the side and gradually make it 
a little bit less, um, take the training wheels off, put it that way. So now I'm going straight to the single barrel and you know maybe you're regretting not putting the guide rails on the side but we'll have a go at this. So generally speaking if you're doing this for the first time put the guide rails on the side um, and then alternatively you can also put a full sized 10 foot to 12 foot rail on the top to give the horse a wider um, view on the top rather than a skinny pole. Just have to show you too this is my solution to trying to stop the pole from being knocked off the top. So a bit of damp arena sand packed onto either side. Um, otherwise we need some kind of a little device. If anybody's got any ideas, I would love to see them. And I've widened out the ground rails here. The other thing you can do is if you want to make a fake ditch here, you can scoop out the sand and make it a different color made myself a fake ditch skinny which I could be regretting quite significantly in a couple of minutes so if I jump it from this side it's um, a normal distance if I jump it from that side I've made myself a ditch skinny Oh, hooray for Huey! Oh my god, that was so good. He felt so obedient, like he was so on his line. He just looked at the barrel and knew exactly what to do and felt like he did not deviate at all. So I am so excited with that. That's fantastic. If you do those exercises at home and it goes really well by the end of your session, don't forget that if you do it again next time, don't start from where you left off the first time because the horses will still look at the barrel like it's an alien. It will, however, become easier a lot faster. So what I would recommend is always starting at a more base level um, because I can tell you right now, next time I won't just go and canter down to a barrel without, um, without any poles on top. So for Huey, because he has schooled this sort of stuff quite a bit, um, I'll probably probably do depends how spooky it is either a barrel one barrel on its side and jump that and then put it upright with a pole on top and then progress to taking off the pole altogether that's probably the progression that i would make um, but if you're doing that for the first time go right back to the beginning again and really establish um, that the horse will jump that no matter what so um, i would think that there are no no time too many that you can jump it to get the horse to be totally at home with it. So I'd almost get to the point where I'd want to trot in on a loose rein and get them just to pop over it without even thinking about deviating. So if you're wondering how many times um, to practice this or how many times you should jump a certain height before you progress to the next difficulty, I would say that depends entirely on the horse. I would prefer to do more of them and get the horse to be really relaxed about it, like almost to the point where they're saying, oh, that's really, really easy. And then I would do things like come in on a bit of a looser rein, um, 
come in on a bit of a miss <laughs> and make sure the horse just understands the exercise um, completely. It's amazing how you start seeing arrowheads everywhere. I reckon we could make those into arrowheads, Huda. Like this could be a hedge corner. I could seriously have like a full hicks dead on here. What do you think, Huda? Yeah? Thanks heaps for watching my barrels part two video. Um, if you've got any more ideas you'd like to share on more exercises with barrels or just stuff that you can do when you don't have a lot of equipment, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe and share the video and stay tuned for more. See ya.